This video is sponsored by Area 52. On your next trip to Nevada, come visit Area 52. We don't have aliens or spaceships, but our apple pie is out of this world. Hey there, this is MIB and welcome to MIB's Top 5. As always, I am joined by my co-host, Clickbait. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us for the new countdown. Once again, I'm Clickbait and thank you, Wait. MIB. Wait! <laughs> Clickbait, why are there two of you? I just like looked up this thing called cloning and it was like pretty easy. I just Googled like how to clone myself because I, I figured, you know, I love being lazy. So if I could just have a second person kind of do what I'm doing, then I wouldn't have to always show up for work. So I, I just made, I made me. I made me. I'm like a mom. You cloned yourself? It's pretty easy. You could do it too, if you want. A day off. I would like a day off. But you might actually just want to make another one of me, because, I mean, I'm why everyone's here, right? Uh, anyway, today we're talking about Godzilla movies that almost happened. And oh my god, there are so many Godzilla films that were almost made. For every Godzilla movie you know of, there are like two or three that were discussed or even scripted, but never made it to the big screen. Many of these unused concepts morphed into the movies that we do have, but some more expensive and bizarre ideas are lost to history. For this countdown, I pulled five of the most interesting, oddest, and most WTF Godzilla films that were almost made, some making it all the way to conceptual art and storyboarding phases. These ideas are batshit crazy, so let's get going. Start us off, clickbait. Number five. Godzilla, King of the Monsters 3D. Well, the way back in 1983, director Steven Miner set out to make an American Godzilla film, and he had approval from Toho. At the time, Miner's only directing credits included Friday the 13th, Parts 2 and 3. But he'd later go on to give us Halloween H2O, Lake Placid, Soul Man. Soul Man. Miner hired William Stout to put together some conceptual sketches, and he had Dave Stevens develop numerous storyboards. The film was going to combine animatronics and stop animation. It would take place in San Francisco. A first draft of the screenplay by Fred Decker is actually available online. It had a dude with an eye patch, Russians, oh it was so 80s. But it would have been so cool to see an early 80s completely American Godzilla film with that horror thriller twist. And if this film were a hit, they wanted to follow it up with an American Rodan 3D film. So why didn't it happen? Miner was looking at a budget of 30 million dollars and studios didn't want to invest. Recall that in America in the early 80s, Godzilla was considered more of a children's property. And after a year or so of looking for backing, Miner just gave up. Number four. Yo, are you seriously gonna just not do anything? You wanna help? Godzilla vs. Deathla. This is a filmmaker named Yoshimitsu Bano. In the early 1970s, he was invited to direct a Godzilla film to revitalize the franchise. This resulted in the very avant-garde film Godzilla vs. Hedorah in 1971. This film has always stood out from the other Showa-era Godzilla films because of its odd mix of satire, environmental messaging, and psychedelia. And although history remembers this movie more fondly, at the time critics had really mixed feelings about Godzilla vs. Adora. I mention this because through the 2000s, Bano was the driving force between a new IMAX Godzilla film called Godzilla vs. Deathla. And he was making it somewhat of a spiritual successor to his film Godzilla vs. Hedorah from decades earlier. Deathla would have even been similar to Hedorah in appearance, with a slimy texture and a human skull for a head. Oh, and he can turn into deadly mushrooms to feed on forests. When Godzilla attacks the fungus, it turns into a swarm of locusts and retreats. Godzilla would then chase the swarm using his flying ability once again. Godzilla and Deathla have a final fight in a snowy New York City, in which Godzilla protects a 9-11 monument. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this film had some 9-11 references sprinkled around it, which... I don't know. 
That kind of imagery probably doesn't mesh well with a Godzilla movie. Bono was in negotiations with Toho to get this film made without their financial backing, only their approval on the look and usage of the characters. The script went through some tweaks over time and it would eventually be retitled Godzilla 3D to the Max before landing on simply Godzilla 3D. But then along came Legendary Pictures with their own desire to make a Godzilla film and by 2010, Bano's vision was forfeited. Although Bano did get to serve as producer on Legendary's Godzilla, as well as the upcoming sequel, King of the Monsters. Word is that Bano tried to rework his Godzilla 3D story into an IMAX Gamera film, and then later on, he was still trying to push a project with Hedora. But he unfortunately passed away in May of 2017, before any of these sequel ideas could be realized. Say what you will about Godzilla vs. Hedora, but I really respect how the director stood by it to the very end. Number three. Is that what my profile looks like? Godzilla versus Godzilla. And no, it's not Godzilla having an existential crisis crying in his own reflection. If you don't know, Godzilla dies at the end of the very first 1954 Godzilla movie. Spoilers, I guess. In the mid-80s, a film we know as Godzilla 1985 came out and acted as a direct sequel to the first film, ignoring all the films in between. In Godzilla 1985, it's made clear that a second Godzilla is now attacking. And that second Godzilla story would continue through the next several films, up until his own death in Godzilla vs. Dastaroya! This string of films that share a continuity is known as the Heisei series. A film that almost made it to the Heisei series in 1995 was Godzilla vs. Godzilla, also known as Godzilla vs. Ghost Godzilla. In this film, the second modern Godzilla would have faced off against the ghost of the first Godzilla from the original 54 film! And I am sold! Stop drilling, you've hit oil! In one draft of the film, the ghost would possess a little Godzilla and grow into a reincarnation of Gojira. This is the actual concept art showing that reincarnation. You can see that the possession forces the little Godzilla's skin to stretch and tear. Other concepts came and went, including adding a Heisei version of Anguirus. Apparently, this idea was scrapped because the director felt it was too much to have Godzilla fight another version of himself for three films in a row. Since this film would have followed Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 and Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. And that's too bad, because I've always loved this concept. But f*** me, I guess. Number two. So you're seriously not doing anything. Hello? 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 Do you think I did it wrong? Bride of Godzilla? Back to that first 1954 Godzilla film. Its first ever sequel was the 1955 film Godzilla Raids Again. After that, Godzilla didn't appear again until 1962, but originally, his third film was going to be released in 1956, and it was to be called Bride of Godzilla? Yeah, it was written as a question like that. I guess Godzilla wasn't sure if he wanted to commit yet. Now, when you hear Bride of Godzilla, you're probably thinking, oh wow, Godzilla's going to meet some female Godzilla, and you'd be right. If, instead of a female Godzilla, you actually thought of a giant, naked, humanoid robot woman. Yeah, a mad scientist named Dr. Sheeta builds this giant robot of a female human in the likeness of his foster daughter. As you do. And the film's treatment implies that she's naked. Because there are no giant-sized banana republics around, I guess. Also, this movie does some major Godzilla world-building, explaining that deep within the Hollow Earth, there are many Godzillas, and Anguirises too. Anguirises. Anguirises. Along with other giant monsters, and mermaids! Yeah, there were also mermaids in a Godzilla film, and oh yeah, Dr. Sheeta falls in love with a mermaid. Jesus, at this point we might as well throw in, I don't know, a giant chameleon? Or a giant motherfucking flea? Wait, those are both in the movie too?! Yep, this film had it all. So Dr. Sheeta's giant robot, known to fans as Robot Daughter, or sometimes Robo Masume, defends Japan by fighting off these giant monsters. She tears off Anguirus' throat and tosses Godzilla around like a rag doll. But then, Godzilla seems to fall in love with her. I guess he likes the aggressive types. He takes Robot Daughter to his private cave, and I feel like a G-Spot joke would go very well here, but I don't want to write it. 
But there is an actual line in a script where someone says of Godzilla, it is the foreplay of love to be beaten. Let them f But it's all a trap, as Robot Daughter is also a timed hydrogen bomb, and she explodes and takes Godzilla with her. I mean, at least he went out happy? I don't know. Number one. Oh, I knew I used too much kitty litter. Batman versus Godzilla. Yup. If you didn't know, Godzilla officially exists in the Marvel Universe. This is due to the Godzilla title Marvel published from 1977 through 1979. But a decade earlier, Godzilla almost made his way to the DC Universe first. You see, in 1966, American culture had bat fever, thanks to the campy and colorful TV show starring Adam West. This hit show made its way to the big screen with Batman the Movie, and that movie almost had a sequel, I kid you not, Batman vs. Godzilla. How would that matchup even work? Look, I'll make that movie right now. I'm Batman. Squish. Done. Back up. Actually, two separate treatments exist for a Batman-Godzilla meetup. One treatment was by the future writer of Godzilla vs. Mothra, Shinichi Sekizawa. It was actually written two months before the Batman show started in America, and it's unclear what the story was behind this treatment, or if it was actually related to the Batman TV show. The second treatment is by an unknown American author under the direction of Batman producer William Dozier. And it's not clear if Toho was ever officially brought on board. This treatment is 20 pages and involves Batman and Robin in Japan facing off against a German meteorologist who has control over Godzilla. Of note, Batman and Robin battle sumo wrestlers, take a bullet train, and Godzilla kidnaps Batgirl, cause we know those giant monsters love little human women. Batman actually scales Godzilla to plant a bomb on his neck, and then amazingly does not die of cancer from the radioactivity. They knock Godzilla out, then build a rocket around him and launch him into space. Everything about this treatment is bonkers, but man, it would have been a great movie. And which one of these movies would you want to see the most? What other unused ideas have you heard of that you love? Let me know in the comments below, and of course I want to thank my dear friend Clickbee! Well, today's been fun. Uh, turns out cloning, I guess, is not an exact science, as you can see. But, I mean, I gave it a shot, so... <laughs> Clickbait, you need to take that thing into the backyard and kill it right now. What? Oh, you're both on your phones now. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, goodbye. I put a little extra razzle-dazzle in this video and got to license some cool, recognizable songs. And that's possible in a big part thanks to these patrons. If you're in a position to contribute to the channel, like my man Irving Jimenez Begito, consider visiting Monster Island Buddies on Patreon.